you've been lied to repeatedly. You've been told that fat causes weight gain. And you've, you've tried over the years, right, to cut fat, to lose weight, and you failed, right? And the reason that it fails is because our bodies desperately need fat to be healthy. The only way to lose weight and keep it off is to understand how macronutrients impact our bodies and which ones we can actually limit to lose weight and heal our body. We divide nutrients into micro and macro, so large and small. The micronutrients, those are the nutrients that our body needs in small amounts. And the best source of micronutrients are organ meats, small fish, dark leafy vegetables, dark leafy green vegetables, and ruminant meats, eggs, milk, and canned fish with bones. Now, ruminant animals and small fish are necessary for us to eat because those two sets of animals are eating the vegetation. And then we get our micronutrients from them, right? And then you have those leafy greens and the, and the organ meats again. Organ meats are where our body has, takes a lot of those nutrients and like it's, they're, they're concentrated there. Macronutrients, right? Those are the nutrients our body needs in large amounts. There's protein, fat, carbs, and water. We don't need one of these. I want to know if you can guess which one we don't actually need. But the the four of them are macronutrients. Which ones do we not need? Put it in the chat. I'm kind of curious to see if you guys will guess correctly. While you're doing that, I'm going to explain to you that protein, those are those amino acids, right, that make up the structure of our body. And then we have things like fats, which is an energy source. But it's also like makes up parts of our body. Like, so it actually builds us. Then we have carbs, which is an energy source. And water is 60% of what our body is. It's water. So let's see, out of curiosity. Yeah, and you got it right. Carbs are not needed. I wonder if the rest of you were thinking carbs, but you didn't write it. But carbs are not needed. So the word needed, required, essential. We can go three days without water. And then what happens to us? We pass, right? No longer. What happens if you don't get protein? Hmm. Well, you're going to have swelling in your body, so that's inflammation and and problems brewing. You're going to have stunted growth. You're going to have a weak immune system, which is not great. Your skin and and hair is going to have damage and problems, not great. Your bones and muscles will start to atrophy. You will actually have loss if you don't eat protein. What happens if you don't eat fat? You're going to have rashes on your skin. You're gonna, like, they're going to be super dry. You're going to have hair loss. Again, a weak immune system if you don't eat fat. And you will have vitamin deficiencies if you don't eat fat. So even though you're eating all those leafy greens, you will have vitamin deficiencies. What happens if you don't eat carbs? Nothing. Your body makes it, right? All that you need. Nothing will happen. Now, I want to point out, if you actually have zero access to food, so the only thing you have is water, but you have no food available, it takes two to three months to pass. So you have a bit more time when it comes on the food side. I want us to understand how important it is to know the difference between fat in the body 
and carbohydrates in the body. So I'm going to give you this example, right? Like if you think about it, when we're teaching our kids to eat, we started them off using a spoon, right? Because it's easier to get the food into your mouth on a spoon than it is on a fork. But over time, as our, our kid gets more capable of using the spoon, we transition them to a fork, right? Because a fork is has a lot of practicality and it takes more skill to use a fork. However, we didn't throw the spoon away. We kept it around for things like soup and cereal, right? And we use the fork most of the time. The fork is the mature way to eat food. Carbohydrates are like the spoon of the world of, you know, internal, right? We, we are brought into this, into our, our, our food eating life, eating carbohydrates, right? That's what, that's what we were taught. So doctors tell mothers to give their kids bananas and cereal. So we are brought in, fooled into believing that this is supposed to be the primary fuel, right? So it's our spoon. And so the companies, they market it to us, the benefits of carbs, right? They're easy to get our kids to eat because they taste super fun, right? They're easy to carry around because we can put them in these little packages and we, we can package them down into like really small amounts, right? And they're cheap. So we can just, we can buy more of them. We can have them, right? Now, the calorie count is low. So that makes those of us who are trying to lose weight feel a little happy. And of course, the, the most important thing about all this is that companies make the most profit off carb-based products. Okay. But fast forward to, well, for myself, 2018. But for scientists, it goes way back, further back than that. We figured out that fat is actually the preferred, preferred fuel source for the body. It doesn't taste as fun, but they provide better quality fuel. They're attached to the proteins that our body needs. And the fat is necessary for our body to build itself safely, correctly, completely. Basically, fat is essential. Another one of the, there's that word again, needed, essential. Fat's actually the fork of our body. The mature thing that our body is trying to do. And it's time for us to use fat for fuel. And we're not going to throw the carbohydrates away because well, we can't really, because our body makes them, right? But they're there for those times when our brain and parts of us that needs carbs need them. And if we're desperate because we didn't get the protein that we needed, if we couldn't find it, we can eat some carb if that's all that's available. But understand, eating carbs, you're using a spoon to eat rice, right? You're, you're using a spoon to eat French fries. Like that, that's not what you would do. You would use a fork. So use your fork to eat meat. So I hope that analogy kind of helps us to see this a little bit more clearly. Because it's important for us to keep in mind that overeating anything is overeating and that will lead to weight gain. So this idea that they're trying to give us that, you know, Carbs have fewer calories, and so therefore, not not necessary. If we overeat anything, we'll gain weight. And by the way, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you drink too much water, they're always telling us, drink more water, drink more water, drink more. They're always pushing us to drink more water and more water. If you drink too much water, do you know that that will also cause problems? It's called hyponatremia. Natremia. And it's life threatening. So even overdoing water is dangerous. We don't need to overdo anything. And our goal should not be to overdo. We need the right amount for our good health. That's what we're supposed to be aiming at. So we already know that it's easy, really easy to overeat carbs, especially processed carbs. So let's pause and talk about that for a second. Like we've seen in nature 
animals, so like birds, for example, that's the example that comes to me really quickly. They will, you know, they will eat some food and then they will give it back to the baby because they're kind of pre-processing it so that the baby has a bit, bit easier time. The little baby bird, right? Has an easier time processing it. We need to understand processed foods are already pre-processed so that when they enter our body, our body has such an easy time just incorporating this stuff that in fact, we are much easier to gain weight. We are much easier to have problems from overeating these things that we really just shouldn't be eating. Right. And, then, and you don't even have to overeat them. That's the part that's so ridiculous is that when you eat a small granola bar or like, or, or not even, even to go further than that, what do you call those things? Those protein bars, they are so easily absorbed into our system. Protein shakes that they're talking about for, you know, those weight, so easily absorbed. And that means that our insulin, like our body's just going crazy when this kind of stuff happens. There is a path that our body is expecting to happen when we eat, that it should do a certain amount of work, right? That's what it's expecting to happen. That doesn't happen. That causes our body issues. So since the 1970s, our weight has been rising due to the increased reliance on carbs for energy and especially the ridiculously increased reliance on processed carbs for energy. Our weight has risen every single year since the idea that fat causes you to get fat was put into practice by medical and by food companies and by pharma. And like when all the companies just kind of got on board, government, everybody got on board with this idea, uh, uh, our, our weight just, it's, it's been going up ever since, right? Carbs taste amazing, especially those processed carbs, right? And that's because they're designed to taste amazing. They are hyper palatable, which is fancy speak for addictive, right? And they cause you to crave, they cause you to chase, they cause you to want more, they cause your insulin to spike. And when that happens, we are in fat storage mode and our weight is rising. We don't understand why. They activate that reward center in your brain. And when that happens, you want them more and more and more. We don't understand why. These two things, and these are the two I'm talking about. Your body is going through so many processes to try to keep you safe from the toxic carbohydrates that come in. But I'm just talking about these two, your insulin spike and that reward center in your brain getting set up cause us to be constantly chasing sugar, chasing sugar, chasing sugar, despite knowing that eating ice cream, cookies, and chocolate will make me fat. I still eat it because I can't help myself. Yeah, I was doing that. I, the amount of chocolate I could eat in one day, the amount of cookies I could eat at one time, it was stupid. Why was I doing that? I knew that food was not helping my weight situation. Couldn't help it. If you are experiencing this, I need you to understand it's real. It's actually happening. The reward center of your brain is being lit up and causing you to chase these foods that they're calling food. I don't think they're not food. They're chemical process stuff that your body doesn't know how to manage in a safe way and is trying to keep you safe from this stuff. And so you're constantly, constantly in a battle with your body. Fats, on the other hand, are very satiating. They're so satiating that it's hard to overeat fat unless, unless you eat it alongside carbohydrates. So let's pause for a second and understand that carbohydrates are that impactful on our health, are that damaging to us that if we eat the healthy thing beside carbohydrates, our body acts like if what we ate was carbohydrates. It just focuses in here on the carbohydrates and 
you're in that cascade again and your body's trying to protect you and it's putting your insulin is rising and that reward center is being and you're in a bad situation so we need to be clear all right our body needs animal protein poultry meat fish eggs it needs animal protein so when i'm about to say when your body eats protein i need to keep in mind i'm talking about animal protein and that's the source of where the bulk of those micronutrients that i talked about earlier are supposed to be coming from the animal protein that you're eating once again if you eat animal protein alongside carbohydrates your body starts and acting like you ate carbohydrates because why because they are da that toxic to us and by the way usually usually animal protein comes along with fat which is why we keep being told not to eat animal protein eat this healthy carbohydrate protein no that's not what your body needs your body needs animal protein Carbs are all vegetation, all of them. Every plant is a carbohydrate. That means the fruits, the vegetables, the grains, the nuts, the seeds, the legumes are all carbohydrates. Yes, they do contain some protein and fat. They do, but not the animal versions that our body is looking for. Again, Ruminant animals and small fish eat the vegetation so that we can eat them and get the micronutrients from them. The, the protein, the animal protein, right? The ruminant animal and the fish. It's so important for us to understand this if we are going to be healthy. Because animal protein is the protein that your body is looking for. <laughs> our love affair with eating protein wrapped up in carbohydrates is why we're all on a path to obesity and illness we 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 rarely eat ground meat alone right we have a burger with fries right and oh we're going to drink some some soda with that just to get more sugar in or maybe we do the diet soda so we can get some um you know, some of those dangerous chemicals, those artificial sweetener chemicals to, to come in and just more toxins for my body to have to fight against. We constantly combine protein and carbohydrates. Pizza, it's protein and carbohydrates. Animal protein and carbohydrates. Whenever I say protein in this video, just understand I'm talking about animal protein, right? Spaghetti and meat sauce, right? We, even if we eat steak, what do we have it aside of what? Rice, potatoes, or pasta, right? We, we don't, almost every single meal I ate had French fries, rice, or pasta as a side dish, bonus warrior. No, I, I can't even say it was a side dish. It was the main dish, and it had a bit of meat on the side. That's really what was going on. It was when you have pizza, the main thing that you're eating is not meat. The main thing you're eating is a bunch of dough and some, okay, the cheese is, is an animal protein, but a bunch of dough. We try to say that this is, you know, an adequate amount of protein for an adult. It's not. We are severely under eating the amount of protein protein that we're supposed to eat severely because why because we keep saying that this little side amount of protein that we have is enough i'm getting off topic so let me get back on topic although there's like research that shows that carbohydrates cause glycation right that's glycation leads to damage in the body okay and we keep saying it's the meat that's causing damage to our body, right? Because we're eating meat and fat, but we don't understand. We don't want to pay attention to the research that is showing that it's the carbohydrates 
that we are eating that's causing glycation. So let's pause here for a second because I want to make sure I'm clear about something. Our body makes carbohydrates. It makes glucose. So if we would eat only meat, would glycation happen? Yes, because we make glucose. A normal amount of glycation would happen. Why do we have ridiculous amounts of glycation happening that is so much glycation our body cannot repair? Because, let me say that, our body every single day repairs itself. Not every week, not once a year, not just when we fast, not just when we exercise. Our body is constantly repairing itself. Now, will it repair itself more when we give it it, it the chance to repair itself? Yes. But it's always repairing itself. The problem is we keep eating stuff that's causing damage, right? We drink and we eat garbage, garbage foods. What what I want us to understand is that the glycation that would happen if we were ingesting carbohydrate, um, sorry, only glucose, just glucose is not the same glycation as what we are forcing on our bodies because we keep eating fruit and vegetables that are coming with fructose. All these grains that have fructose, all these everythings that are bringing fructose into our body. Fructose glycates seven times more than glucose. So even though, yes, If we just only had the glucose that our body was producing, first of all, the amount that our body produces nowhere near compares to the amount that we eat every day, part one. But part two, the glycation factor would be seven times less because fructose would not be in the mix, wellness warrior. We are speeding up and amplifying the glycation in our body and then trying to blame it on meat and fat. No, it's carbohydrates that cause that. And it's fructose specifically that's knocking most of us out. But those healthy vegetables, but those healthy fruits. Now, I know there's going to be people that are going to say, but Violet, there there's some carbs that are better than others. Like, you have to acknowledge that. I will. I, I will acknowledge that there's some carbohydrates that are lower, first of all, in fructose, right? I, it's, it's true. And over the years, okay, so let, let's do this. Over the years, we've been told that fiber protects us from the impact of sugar. And the problem is, that's debatable, right? Because many doctors now, are coming forward and scientists now are coming forward and talking about the fact that we can break down some fiber, right? And when we break it down, we get we gain access to it. So that's not protecting us as much as we think is protecting us. Now we go back to this idea that, well, some of these vegetables are lower in carb than others. Again, that's helpful. Sure unless we end up overeating them because carbs also increase our ability to overeat. So that healthy amount turns into an unhealthy amount, right? And we still need to understand that those veg- those carbs that are coming in, that come with fructose attached to them, even in small amounts, it's not just the amount. If you do your 20 grams, great, but the glycation is still seven times the amount. So if we conservatively say that even only 20% of the fruct of the carbs that came in had fructose, like was fructose, even if we said it was 20%, right? Well, if there was 10 total grams of carbohydrates that was, um, from glucose, well, that's 10 factor, 10 factor, uh, glycation right? And over here, you would have, uh, why do I do that math like that? Let's say eight here and then two here. But 
the eight, here's eight factor glycation, that two grams of stupid fructose is 14 factor glycation, wellness warrior. This is the math that nobody is walking us through. Seven times the amount of glycation. That is the, the number one reason to be screaming and yelling. And by the way, table sugar is 50, 50 glucose fructose. By the way, fruit oftentimes has about, especially if it's a sweet fruit, it has half to more than half of it is fructose because that's why it tastes so dang sweet. But let's say half, let's say they're all half, half or less than half. It still doesn't matter. The factor that is being multiplied by is seven. Add to that, that carbohydrates spike insulin. <laughs> So this is fat storage. So it's not just the glycation that's happening. Now we're storing fat. And if I have insulin resistance, that's a, that's an, a huge other problem because even if I eat the normal amount of carbohydrates that my body is supposed to be able to manage, because I have insulin resistance, my body is much more likely to spike insulin and therefore I'm storing. How many times have I'm talking to people and they're, doing keto numbers, but their weight isn't coming down. Why is that? Well, it's because you're in an insulin resistant person and therefore it doesn't take as much sugar for your insulin to be going crazy because why? Because your body is trying to keep you here with us. That's why. So it's going to store the little that comes in because you are in that danger zone. Insulin resistance is the step before diabetic. Diabetic is not a great place to be. I know we are walking around the planet, a bunch of people, diabetic, acting like this is normal. I just take the medication, I can eat whatever I want. I've heard people say this. I just take the medication, I can eat whatever I want. Why is that what we want? To take the medication and keep eating the thing that caused me to be ill. I don't understand why that's an answer, but it's the answer that I keep getting. One story. It is very important for us to, to, to very clearly be, be as honest with ourselves as we possibly can be about what we're trying to accomplish. And if good health is what we're trying to accomplish, this information matters. If you're not trying to accomplish good health, then what I'm saying is it's, it's useless. It's going to go in one ear and not the other. I can tell you for myself that I absolutely lived a story where I'm eating 20 grams of carbs or less and tracking meticulously and yet feeling pain resuming in my body. My joints sore again, trouble walking up the stairs again. And what I learned from Feeling that was that actually my number was not 20. I thought it was 20. Every doctor says it's 20. My number wasn't 20. 18 grams of carbs or less, or I was in a problem. You don't want to have to be in pain to understand this, but also, why did I understand it? Because I was making the mistake that we all make. My limit is this. I'm trying to get right up to the limit and doing that dumb behavior put me to be in pain for, I think it was at least a few weeks before I could figure out, oh, it's because I'm not 18. I'm, I'm not 20. I'm 18. Right now I was basically what happened just, so, just for me to be clear, I got kicked out of ketosis, even though I was doing 20 grams of carbs or less because I was going right up to 20, right up to 20, always up to 20. And I got kicked out of ketosis, right? And I didn't gain weight. I felt pain because that's my story. Here's the thing. Why am I going, why am I trying to get up to 20, right? Well, because it's normal for us to eat these things. I, sh I should be able to have fun with my food. I'm still living. I was, I was still living that story that food companies have given us that food is for entertainment. That food is for fun, right? I'm supposed to amuse myself, amuse 
wellness warrior. Do you know what the word amuse, that the origin of the word amuse is? It's to deceive. Let's stop doing that, right? Let's stop deceiving ourselves with food. Because when you amuse yourself with food, that's what's, what's happening. You're deceiving yourself. You're creating problems in your body. It's so important for us to understand that that piece of the puzzle, right? Because we are all missing this. I no longer push myself to that edge of even 18. When I learned that the number was 18, I dropped myself to 10. Because why? Because I didn't want to find out that the number is actually 14. Or that I didn't want to find out that the number is actually, you know, 12. I dropped down to 10 because you know what? I'd rather be really below the number because I felt horrible. Again, we push ourselves to these limits because we're only doing this for weight loss. This is not a weight loss diet. And if you see this as a weight loss diet, you're going to keep playing these games with food that are causing us to be in a huge problems. Most of the doctors that I've been talking to are fighting for us to understand that our body wants to be in ketosis. Most of the doctors I watch on YouTube are fighting for us to understand that our body wants to be in ketosis. Why does our body want to be in ketosis, right? Because it's the healthy state that our body is supposed to be in, right? All these metabolic diseases that we've been experiencing over the last few years because we are not in ketosis, first of all, because we are letting toxins in in high, high doses, because we are damaging our body from all this glycation and all. We're overeating sugar. We are overeating sugar on this water. And by the way, that's plants. For anybody, when I say sugar, carbohydrates, it's plants. It's all one and the same. Where does sugar on the table, that white stuff, come from? It comes from plants. Where does high fructose corn syrup come from? It comes from plants. And not just, you can make it with other things than corn, right? We are all walking around in pain because we're over eating plants. High blood sugar is toxic. And our body will do whatever it can to get us out of get that sugar out of our blood. It's going to do whatever it can. It's going to put it in fat storage or do other things with it that end up causing inflammation. Because I started my story off with inflammation. The weight came later. That's the lovely thing. Your body can do a bunch of things, right? It can put it in fat storage. It could put it in, in, in your, in, in tissue that it shouldn't be in. You could have pain. You could like all the things it's, it's, it's a coin toss what you're going to end up getting, right? Placking of arteries and all kinds of stuff. Basically, disruption to our bodies because, well, if I'm still here, I can fix, right? Like the, the mindset of my body, the mindset of, of my mental health and my physical health, like that mindset is if I'm still here, I can fix. So your body's going to do whatever it can to keep you here and it's hoping, and then you're going to find real food. Like we've been, we've been chewing on these plants for how long, but Violet's going to go off and get me some real food. That's what your body's looking for you to do. And then what do we do? We take the medication and we keep eating the stuff that's killing us. There's no way to cheat the system, Wellness Warrior. There isn't a way. If I overeat a certain amount of carbohydrate, right? If I go over what my body is able to manage, my body is going to put some in fat storage. It's going to put some in place. It's going to try to protect me. It's just going to do the things, right? And that's because when I overeat my carbohydrate, I'm now running on carbs, right? I've, my, my ketosis has been turned off. If I eat under a certain amount of carbs, my body's in ketosis and my health and my weight will regulate. There's no way to cheat the system. It works the way that it works. It works perfectly. All we need to do is eat the right diet, the diet that is made for humans, right? If we eat that biologically appropriate diet, our health 
will be the best that it can be for the quality of that food that we're eating, right? That's how it works. If we eat poor quality garbage, poor health. High quality food, better health, right? You still have to work out. You still need to sleep a lot enough. You still have to do all the rest of the stuff, right? But the food is the foundation. The food is the first step. So let's talk about three things you can actually do. Three things that's going to help you to improve your health immediately. Immediately, right now, you're going to do this. You need to know what the right amount of carb is for you to eat. So I want you to start with the basics, right? If you have weight to lose, right? So this this is step one. If you have weight to lose, that means you have metabolic, uh, sorry, you have insulin resistance, right? If you have inflammation issues like what I had, that means you have insulin resistance. If you have metabolic issues, any kind of metabolic issues, right? That means you have insulin resistance. And therefore, you're trying to be under 20 grams of carbs. You're trying to be under. Now, I'm going to suggest that you get a nap and a scale and that you weigh your food and track what you've eaten to make sure, first of all, that you're under 20. If you learn from my mistake, you try to be well under 20, but everybody's going to do their own thing. I want you to track what you're doing because there's no way that you're just going to look at a or pepper and know how much carb is in that, or look at some onions and know how much carb is in that. And those chia seeds and how much, and the problem that I'll say right away from that is that when you mix all those things together to make whatever thing that you're going to make for yourself to eat, well, now we're in the problem of, I'm not just trying to guess how much of one thing I have on my plate. I'm trying to guess what a bunch of, it's so much easier to just weigh what you're going to eat, put it together, eat it and you and, well, and we you weigh it and, and measure it first so that you know if you have too much or what you need to take out right do what's going to help you but that way when you've eaten it you'll know okay that's how much i ate and then you can pay attention to you right again learn from my mistake if you're feeling amazing and then 3 months in all of a sudden you start to have pain again or all of a sudden the weight is coming is not going off or even coming back on, learn from my mistake. Maybe you kicked, you got kicked out of ketosis because your body needs a little bit more assistance. Insulin resistance. I had it. So, I mean, can I just tell you like how it is to even know that I had this medical condition. I had been going to my doctor regularly, checkups and all the things and never told, Hey, you have insulin resistance. Anyways, the second thing that I want you to do, there's, uh, um, is for the four, for the first three months, make it easy on yourself, clear all the junk food out of your kitchen. Just, just throw everything away. Just get rid of it, right? The damage that you're doing to your health to finish eating those foods before you start isn't worth it. First of all, and you might be tempted to buy more garbage to help you to finish the garbage that you're trying to finish right? And then you end up in this never ending cycle of not wanting to throw food away. Stop calling that crap food, by the way. It's not food. So we should be easily throwing this stuff away because it's not food. Like this idea that, well, I just want to finish the cereal. So I end up buying some milk and then I have milk. So man, I might as well buy some cookies. And then I have cookies and wouldn't that go good with ice cream? And next thing you know, you just like always, you never get to the part where there's no junk in your house. And so therefore you don't start this healthier thing that you've said that you want to do. The third thing that I want you to do is decide in advance what you will tell people if they ask you why you aren't eating normally. I think this is one of the things that frustrates me that causes people to stop their healthy lifestyle, not purposefully, but what happens is 
when you're at home, you're eating really well. And maybe even at work, if you work in a scenario where you eat by yourself, you're doing really well. And then you have that first occasion where there's a party or a situation where you have to go do some. You have the one occasion where, there, where you're eating with people that are outside your circle, let's say. But So you don't necessarily want to tell them what you're doing. But they're offering you stuff and like you don't know what to say. You don't know how to say no or whatever's happening. And we'd end up just say, oh, I'll just eat it this one time and I'll get back on it tomorrow. Wellness warrior, when you work so hard to get yourself into a ketogenic state, and for those of you who went zero to a hundred, like I did, and you would live that withdrawal, like I did, and then you let something back in, the problem is getting back into ketosis the second time is a bit hard. So if you if you eat that one thing and that causes you to start chasing, now you're out of ketosis, getting back, uh, it's hard. And if that keeps happen to you, happening to you, at some point, I've seen it over and over again, where people are now like more out than they are in. And your health problems come back. And your weight problems come back. It's bad. It's just bad. If you don't feel strong enough to say that you're doing keto, you can say anything else. Like, this is one of the few occasions where I'm saying, look at the story and pull one thing out that you can say. I have a gluten sensitivity because honestly, gluten is part of most foods that you will be putting down. So you could just say, I have a gluten sensitivity. That's easy enough. You could say that you have some sort of allergy that seems to be related to processed foods, right? And so I don't eat processed food. You could say that mm, the oils that they use in restaurants, I, I can't tolerate anymore. Again, we shouldn't be in eating um, seed oils. I didn't even touch seed oils today, but I'm opening this. I want you to look at whatever thing that you see that happens. Pick it. And say, yeah, I don't, I'm not eating those things because, and, and give a reason that's real for you, right? I, I have no problem saying that, ah, I, I don't know, carbs, they just don't make me feel good. I, like, I can say that because they don't. It's the truth, right? We have so many reasons, right? The inflammation that you're living, the weight that you're living. Like when someone asks you, while you're not eating normally, you need to feel as confident in what you're doing in the response you. When we have a quick, confident response, most people will accept what we say and not push and ask any further questions, right? When I say I don't eat X, most people don't care why I don't eat it. They're like, All right, right? If I say I'm not hungry, which is another very good answer I can give. I brought my own lunch is another very good answer I could give. Most people aren't going to question it. And if they question it, you could just say, yeah, I, I'm sensitive to those foods. I'm not eating them. Again, most people don't want you to be ill. Most people are offering you this because they, they truly believe in themselves. This is the only way to have fun, right? They entertain themselves this way. And they're expecting that you're going to entertain yourself this way. That does not need to be your story. Right? When you know your answer and you say it quickly, that allows you to say no to those harmful foods that you're going to possibly be offered at work, at parties, at gatherings, that are going to cause you to feel sick either tomorrow or later, or cause your weight to, right? Or cause you to chase, which is like, like that dopamine, that, that, that reward center of my brain thing that's going to happen, that's going to cause you to be chasing, that's going to cause you to be no longer moving towards the good goal that you have for yourself. It's not worth it so that you don't have a disagreement with this person who isn't going to be with you tomorrow when you're struggling. Right? You are going to be by yourself struggling tomorrow and wondering, why did I do this to myself again? 
right? And the reason that that happens is because we've been programmed this way. We've been programmed to, to give in, right? To see this stuff as just normal. Every, this is eating normally, by the way, right? This is eating normally, eating garbage, eating chips, eating ice cream, eating junk food, eating chocolate. That's eating normally. The person that eats meals, healthy meals and only healthy meals, it, it, it made me so angry that when I was eating normally, it was rare to see a vegetable on my plate. Nobody seemed to complain about that. But when I began keto and had only healthy vegetables and meat on my plate, somehow I was eating weirdly, strangely wrong. It's not their place to tell you what's healthy to eat, first of all. But second of all, I personally am insulted that people only started to question what I was eating when I was eating healthy foods. How could you not eat bread? Oh my gosh. Bread is so normal to eat. Insulted, wellness warrior. And you should be too. That if anybody comes up to you and questions what you're eating, like you should just be easy to say, none of your business. But not everybody is as rude as me. And I get that. Okay. I want you though, I want you to be able to say the thing that you can say that stops the conversation. I'm, I have allergies. I, I can't risk it. Say that. I can't risk it. I have allergies. It's easy. Nobody's going to push you. This allows you, when you're at a restaurant, to sit there and make adjustments if, you, if the restaurant, if you trust it, make adjustments to the menu and order what makes sense for you, right? Everything you eat should suit your needs, your health needs. Because only you're, you're the only one that's going to live the repercussions of what you eat. And you need to remember that your body will always prioritize health. It's going to prioritize health over weight loss. Even if you want that weight loss so badly, your body is going to be focused on health. You might want that pain to go away so badly. Your body is focused on health. And when I, what I mean by that, sugar is toxic. It cannot stay in your blood for too long. It has to be removed. The same way that alcohol has to be removed. The same way that, like any toxin, if you breathe in a toxin, your body removes it and puts it in fat storage oftentimes, but also will help you eliminate it in other ways. It, your body, number one goal is keeping you safe. So we can't dictate that, oh, today you're going to lose weight for me. That's not how this works. If you eat toxins, carbs, alcohol, other substances, if you ingest, breathe them in, if you breathe them in, if you put them on your skin, your body is focused on those toxins before weight loss. Okay. So if you care <laughs> about the fat that you're in your that you have on you getting used up, right? If you want it to be used up, limiting the toxins that you eat is a great way to do that because then it allows your body to focus on the things it should be focused on to begin with, right? Taking care of you, fixing these things and like making sure that you're okay, rebuilding itself and regulating your weight. That's like when you when your body rebuilds itself in a healthy way, it regulates your weight along the way because it can use some of that energy that's been sitting there waiting to be used to help you to build a, a healthier body. What we really need to do is allow our body to be efficient, right? We want our body to be efficient and use its metabolic fork, right? So it's using fat for fuel. It's going to use protein and fat to build our body and use that carbohydrate spoon sparingly, right? In the few scenarios internally that need it, and only carbohydrates come into the body if I am in an emergency. There's no meat for days, maybe even weeks. Okay, let me, let me eat some carb. But if I don't need to be doing that, and most of us today do not need to be doing that, um, the grocery store is just down the road for me. 
It's like a, a five minute car ride for me to go get any kind of meat that I want. So like for most of us, if we're living that story, even if you're one of the unlucky people on this planet that's in a food desert, when you go to those fast food places that are actually around you, buy the burger, throw the bun away. There are ways to do it to prioritize your health. Now, if you're still skeptical that you could walk away from veg, I have a video that I'm link I have linked in the description and it's going to be at the end of this video about how often you can actually eat junk food on a keto diet that I talk about all this. So check out those videos next, that, that video next. 